In the previous video, we showed that the function g works for computing the exact integral of these four monomials. Now we want to show that this is enough to prove that it will work for any polynomial up to degree 3 as we've been doing uh, for the interval negative 1, 1. So let's say you've thought up your crazy function and we want to know what the integral of that is. Well, since it's of degree 3 or less, it is of such a form. Some constant, let's call it uh, what could we call it? Let's call it C3 times what do we have here? X to the third, right? So we have some constant times x to the third plus some constant times x squared plus some constant times x plus some constant times x to the zeroth. Right? So if we want to further simplify that, we can basically just make each one of these its own integral, right, each one of these terms, right, so we'll do that here, negative 1 to 1, dx, and here we have negative 1, 1, right, so in the next step, we could pull this consonant, uh, constant out in front, in each one of these cases, since it does not depend in any way on x, so we have c3 times the integral of x to the third from negative 1 to 1, and then we have that same thing for c2 of x squared there, and of c1 for x, and of c0 for x to the zeros. And now we can evaluate that. So we have three, three, uh, c3 so what is the antiderivative here? That would be mm, x to the fourth divided by four evaluated at negative one to one, which would be here c2 times x to the third over three, right? That would be the antiderivative of that here evaluated at negative one and one. And the same thing for C1, x squared over 2 evaluated at negative 1 and 1, and C0 C the antiderivative of this would be just x, right? Again evaluated at negative 1 and 1. Okay, so let's see what that turns out. We have C3 times, that's just going to be 1 fourth minus negative 1 fourth to the fourth. So actually this was 1 to the fourth, right? We can see that's going to turn out to be 0 since this negative sign gets lost, so it's just one-fourth minus one-fourth, that's zero. 
See, 2 times 1 to the third divided by 3 minus negative 1 third divided by 3. So what's that going to be? So that's basically 1 third plus 1 third, right? So that turns out to be 2 thirds. And C1 is going to be 1 squared over 2 minus negative 1 squared over 2, which is again it's just going to turn out to be 0 since these negative signs cancel out. And then we have C0 times 1 minus negative 1. So, and that turns out just to be 2, right? So we end up with 2 thirds C2 plus 2 C0. So that's what we get for the actual integral. Now what we want to show is that our function g comes up with the same answer. So g of x we just defined as f of negative 1 over the square root of 3 plus f of 1 over the square root of 3, right? But what is that? What does that mean? f of negative 1 over the square root of 3 just means plugging that in to the polynomial, right? So we get, again, this constant c3 times negative 1 over 3, uh, square root of 3, to the third power, plus the constant c2, times negative 1 over the square root of 3, squared, plus c1, times negative 1 over the square root of 3, to the first power plus c0 times negative 1 over the square root of 3 to the zeroth power. And then we just have to add this. So I think I'll just do my best to, to copy that here. Because basically it's the same thing just with plus 1 over the square root of 3. So let's simplify this. Since these exponents are uneven, so if, since they're odd, we're going to end up with a negative 1 here, and here, so here we're going to end up with a negative 1 on top, and here we'll end up with a 1 on top. So these are just going to cancel out. So we can forget about those. And this is also an odd exponent. So these are going to cancel out. Right? This is just negative 1 over the square root of 3, and this is 1 over the square root of 3, so if we add those together, we get 0. So all we have to do is look at these two. Uh, since that's an even exponent, that is going to turn into a plus sign, and since this is an even exponent, that's also going to turn into a plus sign. So I have here two of these, right? So 2c2 and both of these are just uh, 1 over the square root of 3 squared, which is 1 third, right? So 1 third plus 2c0 times, now both of these are positive, but even that doesn't matter since the exponent is 0, it's just 1, right? So times 1. So if we simplify that, we get 2 thirds C2 plus 2 C0. So that's what we end up with. Now let's hope that that's the same thing we got before. We ended up before with 2 thirds C2 plus 2 C0.
or C0. So whether we evaluate the actual integral between negative 1 and 1, or we use our function g, we get the exact same answer. Hence, our function g will always give us the exact integral between negative 1 and 1 of the function. But what we wanted to show was that it would work for any function. And we will show that in the next video.